Hello everyone, and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Hawkridge Systems. This is Jacob Ames, Senior Applications Engineer, and in today's video we'll be covering a fantastic feature introduced in 2022, the Stud Wizard. Now if you're already familiar with the whole wizard feature in SOLIDWORKS, you'll be excited to learn that the Stud Wizard operates in essentially the same way for simple, efficient placement of externally threaded studs. If you're unfamiliar with the whole wizard, however, make sure to check out the link in the description below for a video tutorial on the basics. Here we have a simple bracket design with a few holes already placed, but in this case the goal is to create a couple studs with external threads to fit into another component in an assembly. Now prior to 2022, there were a couple different ways to accomplish this through the use of purely cosmetic threads or traditional thread features, but both of these approaches are rather inefficient compared to the ease of use of the stud wizard, and in some cases left a lot to be desired. So let's take a closer look at how to take advantage of this feature. To access the stud wizard, first access the features tab of the command manager and then look for the whole wizard feature. You'll find the stud wizard underneath the whole wizard by clicking the small down arrow. Alternatively, you can access the insert drop down, then features, then stud wizard. Once active, you'll find that two different modes are available for using the stud wizard. First, let's suppose you already have a cylindrical extruded or revolved boss in place to represent a stud like we have here. In this case, you'll want to use the first option, which applies stud characteristics to an existing cylindrical feature. In the first selection highlighted here, you'll need to select a circular edge on the model representing where the threads of the stud should start. At this point, you should see a preview on the screen, but we've yet to update the specifications of the stud. This process is very similar to the whole wizard feature. First, define the standard you're working with, and then select the type of thread you'd like to create, either machined thread or a straight pipe tapped. Then select the appropriate size pitch combination from the available size dropdown, and the required diameter field will be populated automatically as the preview adjusts to reflect the new specification. In the thread group box, you can control the depth of the thread with a blind depth input, or you can switch the end condition of the thread to up to next or through for additional flexibility. Finally, two checkboxes are available for further customization. Thread class allows you to select between tolerance classifications for the threads, which will appear in the thread callout associated with the stud feature, but will not affect the nominal geometry of your model. Clicking the undercut checkbox provides three additional fields, which can be filled in to create what is essentially a revolved cut underneath the threads for proper fitment of other components. The first of these fields controls the diameter of the material that will remain after the undercut. The second field controls the depth of the undercut, and the third field allows you to change the radius of the fillet that is automatically applied to the undercut geometry. Once the feature is complete, all of these dimensions can be accessed by simply double-clicking a face of your shiny new stud wizard feature, and edits can be made using these dimensions, or preferably, by editing the feature in the design tree. The second mode available in the stud wizard is especially useful when you don't already have cylindrical geometry in place for the stud. When this is the case, start the stud wizard in the same fashion as before, but choose the second mode in the property manager. This mode allows you to create a stud directly on a surface, including the creation of the cylinder body. Be aware that there are two tabs in this mode, much like the whole wizard, and if you'd like to see a geometry preview while defining the stud parameters, you'll need to define the position of the stud first. Switch over to the position tab and select the surface on which you'd like to create the stud. Then, again, just like the whole wizard, place sketch points on the surface to represent the location of the studs you'd like to create. Once positioned properly, switch back to the stud tab of the property manager and start by defining the height and diameter fields for the stud shaft. If you prefer, you can actually set the thread standard first as this will define the minimum diameter for the shaft. Finally, adjust the thread height and apply a thread classification or undercut if desired and just like that, you've built a fully featured stud from scratch. Now you may notice that as a result of using the stud wizard, the cylindrical stud geometry is cut back as needed to accommodate the thread diameter, which is one of the major advantages that this tool has over cosmetic threads, where this process would have to be done manually. On the other hand, the resulting thread display is still cosmetic, as you can see here, and does not create real physical thread geometry, which gives us a performance advantage over the thread command. So how are these studs treated in drawings? Well, as you can see here, placing the drawing view automatically generates a callout for the threads of the stud, indicating the size, pitch, and type of threads that are used. However, you may need to apply dimensions for the depth of the threads manually. 
If for any reason these callouts are not automatically applied, or if you happen to delete them, they can be activated by right-clicking on the cosmetic thread of the stud and choosing Insert Callout from the shortcut menu. As a parametric note, these callouts will automatically update if the stud definition is ever updated. Finally, if you're already an Avid Hole Wizard user, you may be wondering how the stud wizard handles toolbox components. You'll be happy to learn that just like traditional fasteners, stud wizard features support drag and drop directly from toolbox if you have SolidWorks Professional or Premium, along with the automatic sizing for super quick and easy assembly. It doesn't get much easier than that. We hope you got some good use out of this video, and if you did, give it a like and let us know how you're using the stud wizard in the comments. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel for weekly tech tip videos on everything SolidWorks, and easy access to our huge library of other tips and tricks. Finally, if you're looking to become a true SolidWorks expert, be sure to check out HawkRidgeSys.com for more information on the SolidWorks certification program and to learn all about our professional SolidWorks training opportunities. With that, thanks for watching, and see you next time.